After a huge fourth quarter comeback, the Raptors saw themselves with the last possession down by one after a questionable call from the referees. However, they could not knock down the buzzer beating winner. But was there more good than bad to take away from this game? Let's get into it. Welcome to the Raptors Roundup on Amateur Sports. This is the segment on the channel where we go through the Raptors game from the night before. We go through a bit of an overview of the game. We give you a synopsis of proceedings. Then we give you three takeaways that we can move on with for the future. But this is Amateur Sports where we give you NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors at least four days a week. So if it is your first time here with me today and you like what you see, want more of myself talking about the Toronto Raptors in this video podcast style, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Show your support, join the movement of the channel. Thank you so much to everybody for 1600 subs we are pushing on from here but as you can see back in the old studio and we'll be here for the next few weeks so sorry you like the old one better i like this one more and we're gonna roll with this but let's get into the game we're here to talk about the toronto raptors after their 106 105 loss to golden state warriors one where the raptors were up by one with seven seconds remaining and We'll call it a questionable call from the referees. Put Damian Lee on the line for the game-winning free throws. Pascal Siakam had a chance at the buzzer, but it rimmed out and just could not fall. And the Raptors fall to 2-7 and seven on the season. Who would have seen this coming? I mean, maybe you didn't think the Raptors would be what they were last season, but did you really imagine two and seven to start the year? This is one where neither of our centers got any minutes and... They don't deserve any minutes, and the Raptors played better than normal in this game, but it still wasn't quite good enough to get it done. But let's get into the synopsis of the game. So you notice immediately in the game, the Raptors start with that small ball lineup. They find a way to fit Norman Powell in with the other four core guys. Lowry, Van Vliet, Powell, Ananobi, and Siakam start off this game, and you know, initially kind of skeptical. I'm kind of wondering what we're going to do with the height, especially against a team with James Wiseman. I know the Warriors moved the ball well, but I kind of wanted Chris Boucher to get that starting spot if we weren't going to start Alex Len or Aaron Baines for this game. Our offense came out very cold, was not shooting well, and I'm just thinking, you know, even though we're small, we don't need to be shooting all these threes. We can still get our points at the rim, and we saw that later on in the game, but we let the Warriors get out to this nice early lead, and basically that lead held for almost the whole game. We went the first five minutes without a field goal. We started the game 0 for 9 from the field, and I'm already getting very frustrated. We're, we're very early on in this game. But the defense does look good. The defense is doing a good job on Steph Curry, and that would continue throughout the game. But, you know, it fits this trend. The Raptors either have a game where they're good on offense, like the game against Sacramento, and they have bad defense. Or they have the game against the Warriors where they were great on defense, but maybe weren't as good on offense. They can't have both in the same game. And one day, the Stars are going to align, and both those things will come together on the same night, and the Raptors will have a great win, but wasn't last night. We chased the lead for a little while, started chipping away a little bit, but then Eric Pascal hits basically a buzzer-beating three to end off the first quarter. We're down by seven. Lots of game not out of reach. So moving on to second quarter, Chris Boucher was great to end off that first quarter and was great to start off the second quarter. He's having a fantastic game. I find myself almost every video having to say, play Chris Boucher more. And people are pointing it out to me now, but it, it, it's so glaring that Chris Boucher comes in and is a difference maker. And the Raptors perform well when Chris Boucher is on the court. You know, from what I see from the eye test, when I'm watching Chris Boucher play, the Raptors are better with him on the court. Other than Boucher, Siakam is playing very well. And, you know, I don't want to get him ahead of myself and say that, like, Pascal Siakam, Spicy P is back. But this is a few games in a row now where Pascal Siakam has had great games and has been better defensively and has been very efficient offensively you know not shooting a lot of threes which is great getting to the rim slashing and that continued in this game besides some individual performances our offense is very disconnected we're making sloppy passes sloppy mistakes we're not being very efficient with our shooting opportunities but to be fair the Warriors also playing great defense closing out very well on our shots however I'm still you know, the, some of the passes which is a little bit errant like you know, there was one Terrence Davis on a fast break, had Yuta Watanabe in the corner and kind of threw it at his feet when he could have given him a spot up three in the corner. That was one that, you know, really frustrated me just as the Raptors were getting momentum. But that wasn't the only one. There were plenty of other examples where Raptors just couldn't quite get that clean pass out to set up a good look. And the Warriors keep doing their thing. They're shooting well in this game. You know, every team seems to shoot well against the Raptors and the Warriors are not exempt from that. Obviously, the Golden State Warriors shooting threes. But, you know, 
the offense starts to go cold and the Warriors who are still doing their work pull out to a bit of a better advantage and we find ourselves down by 10 points. Despite Curry having a very poor shooting night, especially in the presence of Fred Van Vliet, the Warriors are still up and Fred Van Vliet is playing very well and so is Chris Boucher. Lots of basketball left. Despite Curry's struggles, the Raptors were struggling and the Warriors were still continuing to thrive because Curry, you know, his shooting wasn't great throughout the game, but he was still being a point guard. And some of the passes and some of the assists he was setting up throughout the game were completely ridiculous. Just stuff I wouldn't have even seen watching the game on the television. Curry spots it out, sets up a play, and Curry's still contributing despite his shooting struggles. So third quarter, lots of basketball left. You know, Warriors are playing decently. Wiggins is having a good game, as he always does against the Toronto Raptors, but lots of basketball to go. Warriors are doing their thing. Curry continues to struggle, but Raptors still can't quite chip away. And, you know, even though Curry's struggling, Kyle Lowry also really struggled up until the fourth quarter. Only had one point after the first three quarters, and 16 fourth quarter points was huge. However, wasn't quite there for the entire game. So even though Curry was struggling, Lowry was struggling too, and it was kind of balancing out, basically. We never really recovered from that bad start to the game. We never really found ourselves right back in the game. And even if we did for like a few seconds, the Warriors would pull away again, and that kept happening throughout the game. We couldn't quite manage that momentum to take a bit of a lead in this game. We were allowing bad second looks. Like, you know, we got our second looks as well. We got our second chance points. But I felt like there were so many opportunities where the ball just fell right to a Warriors player who got an easy easy layup on a second chance point you know it's one thing you get a rebound you kick it out you work a play again but to get it right at the rim for an easy layup that one's really frustrating to watch Fred Van Vliet is still looking great Pascal Siakam is still looking great but our bench did kind of let us down in this game other than Chris Boucher wasn't getting a ton of help on the bench side of things the Warriors bench was doing great and our bench couldn't counteract that with some points of their own and you know even though we did well against the Warriors starters when the bench came in we just really struggled to generate any sort of offense. We only got 21 points in this quarter. The Warriors are just playing a cleaner offense, and that's why they are leading by so much at this point. Going to the fourth quarter, nothing is overly bad from the Raptors, but we're not being overly good either. And for that reason, the Warriors are out to this lead. But one big run, one good run for the Raptors will completely change the narrative of this game, and we get it to happen. Lowry comes alive, gets us going, and off the back of Lowry having a phenomenal fourth quarter, we make it a four-point game all of a sudden. The defense turns it on even more, and, you know, the Raptors always have great ends of game. Like, you know, the last six minutes of a fourth quarter, the Raptors are always great, but because it wasn't a blowout at that point, the Raptors are actually in this game. Usually when we have this great fourth quarter, we're down by way too much. We can't really come back, but here... We are right in this game all of a sudden, and this is anybody's game. We're hitting clutch shots, which has not happened in other games. There are guys getting it done for us in the big moments. Fred Van Vliet included, Pascal Siakam included. It was fantastic to see these guys actually contributing on offense late in the fourth quarter. We find ourselves up by one point with 7.7 .7 seconds remaining, and a phantom call on Damian Lee. Damian Lee gets a shooting foul, which would give him three shots at the free throw line. And the referees reviewed it because of a coach's challenge from Nick Nurse and deemed that it was on the floor, but still a foul. Now, I watched that play many times. Fred Van Vliet did not touch Damian Lee at all. Kyle Lowry maybe got a graze of a fingertip on his elbow at best. I did not see enough. Damian Lee went up ridiculously out of control, kicked out, and got himself the call. And despite the refs reviewing it, they did not want to look bad and change that call. You know, in the end, you know, the Raptors, there was a lot of things that went into this result, but that was the key factor in the game. That would have been, that's the game really right there. Giving the Warriors those free throws, and obviously Damian Lee still has hit them. Maybe people saw it otherwise. Maybe, I really don't think I'm being biased here. I did not see a foul there. Damian Lee gets his two shots, hits both. Now the Raptors have to go the other way with 4.3 seconds left to try and win this basketball game. Now I'm thinking right before this play, historically, Nick Nurse is not great at drawing up last shot plays. Now we think of probably the two most historic and best known Raptors buzzer beaters, maybe in their franchise history. First of all, this Kawhi Leonard play right here. You know, obviously, Fantastic. Game seven, he hits a buzzer beater. But let's think about the play. Kawhi Leonard gets the ball at the top and gets double teamed by Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, which leads to a deep two 
from the corner with Joel Embiid draped all over him. Now, obviously, fantastic the shot falls, but we can't ignore the fact that that was a ridiculous shot and a very low percentage opportunity generated from a timeout leading to that play. And then we look at OG Ananobi in Game 3 against the Boston Celtics. A cross-court pass to OG Ananobi with Jalen Brown right in his face. Obviously, again, it falls, and we're excited. It's fantastic, but... You got to acknowledge that these maybe aren't great plays. And I've seen enough Norman Powell isolation deep threes as the clock is winding down to know that Nick Nurse doesn't usually have a plan here. And in this situation, you know, I love Nick Nurse, but Nick Nurse did not draw up a good play here. I don't know if Pascal Siakam was the first option in the timeout for this play. It looked like they were trying to generate a chance for OG and Anobi at the rim, but it was kind of a pathetic attempt to get that to happen. So they go to Pascal Siakam in the backcourt and Siakam has four seconds to travel halfway down the court and create a good shooting opportunity for himself. And you know what? He does a pretty good job, but we have to settle for a very deep two that just rims out. And you know, maybe if it goes in, I'm not talking about it like this, but come on, that is not a good enough play to end off a game. You had the chance to win a basketball game, a spin move just inside the three point line, not a good enough play to get it done. And it still almost fell because of the talent of Pascal Siakam. But I'm pretty disappointed that that is the way we have to end up the game. Ending up the game on a bogus referee call and a bad last play. And you know what? The Raptors didn't really deserve to win this game in the end because they struggled throughout most of it to keep up with the Warriors. But came alive in the fourth quarter. And for that reason, they put themselves within a chance to win this game. But I didn't want to lose a game like that. That was a really tough and heartbreaking way to lose. You know, we kept Curry to 11 points and 2 for 16 from the field. And we still didn't win this game. We kept the superstar at bay and couldn't win this game. Something is clearly off with this season. And, you know, maybe it is the bigs. Maybe it is the lack of bigs. Maybe losing Ibaka was that huge of a deal. Because, you know, we had a pretty good game. And there are a lot of positives to take from it. But we still couldn't get the win here. Like Curry still had its looks in this game. He missed a lot of open threes. And if Curry, the superstar of this team, hits the shots he's supposed to hit, then all of a sudden, maybe this game was a blowout. Maybe this would have been a blowout in favor of the Golden State Warriors. But it wasn't. The Raptors had their opportunities to win. Didn't quite get it done. And it's painful. The Raptors are 2-7. and seven. Game against Portland tonight. I think it's a winnable game. Then back-to-backs against Charlotte. You know, we really, really could be seeing three wins from this. Will we see three wins? I really don't think so. I'm hoping for two out of three on this trip. You know, Portland and Charlotte twice, I'm really hoping for two wins here. So let's move on to the three takeaways from the game. The first key takeaway for the game is that the game is 48 minutes long and the Raptors have had so many dry spells throughout their games, but they really turn it on late in the fourth quarter. But the Raptors need to be better throughout the 48 minute period. They can't just turn it on these in these little spells to come back, you know, when they're down late. It needs to be consistent throughout the game. And we see in these spells how talented this Raptors team can be, but we need to see it more often throughout the game. And if that changes, the Raptors will be more successful. And, you know, we know they've always had these bad shooting spells, these bad pockets where they're not hitting anything. And and it happened again against the Golden State Warriors, and it really costed us in the end. Second key takeaway is that Nick Nurse really needs to work on drawing up those last shot plays because, you know, if the Raptors are really fighting, you know, they're trying to get scrap out a win in a game like this, if it comes down to the last shot, I want to go down with a good look. You know, you drop a good play, and the guy just doesn't hit his shot, whatever. Maybe I'll call out the guy a little bit for not being, you know, having that clutch shot, but at least the play was good. At least you drew up an opportunity to win the game because, that wasn't it last night. That wasn't it. The third key takeaway is that it really looks like the Raptors are coming back to what they were. Again, Pascal Siakam, I don't want to want to jinx it. I want to say anything, but Siakam has looked like his former self for the last few games, and it looks like it is going to continue. There is no indication that it won't continue. You know, he's found his feet. He's found his rhythm. It just seems like he's back to his former self. We're also back to our former selves in a way of shutting down the other team's superstar. Fred Van Vliet was fantastic on defense against the Golden State Warriors and the Raptors as a whole were pretty good keeping Curry to 11 points but didn't do a good enough job guarding the Warriors bench who had a lot of fun in that game. They got a lot of opportunities, got a lot of points. Wanamaker, Lee were hidden shots. Wasn't great from the Raptors bench in this one. But when it was the first unit for the Warriors out, the Raptors limited them offensively. Like, you know, I'll take allowing 106 points to the Golden State Warriors, and you got to really outscore that. You know, that's a good margin in the current NBA to keep a team at. The Raptors just could not quite outscore them, but... 
There are positives to take from the game. There's negatives, but there are positives to take away from this game at the very least. And hopefully in the back-to-back, -back, we don't need to sit on this loss very long. We roll right back into the Portland Trailblazers game tonight. Hopefully we can get a win, get ourselves some momentum going into the back-to-back -back versus Charlotte. You know, I really feel like the Raptors are going to take advantage of that back-to-back -back against Charlotte, get some wins, get going, get themselves near 500 so we can push on and try to make the playoffs here. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions. What did you guys make of this game? Did the Raptors play well? Is there more positives and negatives? Which individual players stand out? Let me know everything in the comments down below. But that wraps up for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still here, please like the video if you like and subscribe to Amateur Sports for more content just like this. We'll have another video tomorrow, a Raptors roundup for the Portland Trailblazers game. I really hope we are here to talk about a victory. At the end of the day, I believe what I say. If you disagree, that is okay. We'll see you again next time for another video. Video.